All right, so I originally started out doing this in a different shot, one that had less available light in the scene and just darker in general, because I wanted to kind of hide some of the mistakes with dim lighting and maybe shaky camera footage, because I knew that this wasn't going to be perfect, because I haven't really done a whole lot of CG or 3D animations in After Effects. I'm just sort of getting used to it. And so this was more of a learning experience for me, and I thought I would share some of the things that I learned with you. So the first thing I did was I selected my video footage, went to the tracker tab in the right, I clicked analyze and after it solved the camera it had all of these tracking markers all over the footage. And so I originally started out with this shot and slowly realized that the tracking wasn't that great because of how poorly lit the scene was and I kind of had this in the back of my head when I was actually shooting the footage. I kind of had to reevaluate my decision with the dark scene. Nonetheless, I still went ahead and gave it a go and like I expected, the track wasn't that great. In fact, it was decent, but it wasn't 100% and it wasn't to the standards that I wanted it to be. However, I am going to go over the color grading process of this scene because I think it worked out really well with a dark scene and how I blended the whole effect together. But we're going to skip over to another shot where I actually did the tracking a lot better. So in the tracker tab, I just tracked the camera and under the advanced tab, I just clicked detailed analysis because I wanted to make sure that this did a perfect track. And in the meantime, I created a new black solid and I just called it Demogorgon just because I know that I'm going to put the Demogorgon on that layer. And then I searched in the effects and presets tab, drag the element effect onto the black solid. Then after I got bored of that song, scrolling through the music, picking the one I liked, I got back to work realizing that my track had finished and it had finished solving the camera. So these situations are very different. It just depends on what your scene looks like, but you can see as I kind of scrub around through here, you can see these different targets. And if I select a whole bunch of them, it'll draw another target. And uh, I just want to see if I can grab a decent target that's kind of in line with the floor plane or maybe the wall. But I figured I'm just going to right click on one and create a solid and a camera. I feel like in this situation, it might work best, but who knows, maybe later on down the scene, I might choose a different option. But for now, we're going to keep it like that. So once I open element, I go to import and I just import the OBJ file that has the CG or the 3D element, in this case the Demogorgon. Once I scale it up, I'll press OK. And you can already see that it's huge, so I'm just going to open the group 1, open the particle replicator, and I can use X, Y, and Z values to adjust the scale and the position of my subject. And keep in mind, if you have an actual rig, so a character rig in your 3D element, you will go through groups one through six or however many you create, and you will have to adjust them individually like that. That's how you do your animations. I'm not going to go through animations in this video because frankly, I need to do some practice and get used to it. And it's a little bit beyond this tutorial. So occasionally I have to go back into element and just change the scale a little bit. Might Maybe I'll have to take it down a bit to kind of fix the scale in After Effects. That just helps the track a bit better and it can be a little iffy sometimes and like I mentioned situational issues can pop up so sometimes it takes a different solution to every situation and you can see later on here I'm going to look for a different tracker and see if I can apply different data to the 3d element that way it is tracked better into the scene and it looks pretty decent here one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out the bottom part of his legs because clearly it's not 100% tracked by the feet and you obviously don't want the feet in front of the chair but before that I need to make sure that my lighting and scene setup is correct so by right clicking in the timeline I'll just go new and I'll do a new light and then I'm just going to choose the color you can choose kind of a similar color to what the lights are in the scene so if you have a blue light choose like a light blue color and so on I'm just going to do a point light and I'm going to click OK and then I'm just going to drag the light around with the X Y and Z values that way I can get it looking the way I want so in this situation I have a big glass door to the left of the camera so I'm going to drag my light that way and I'm also drag it a little behind the Demogorgon that way it adds a little bit of a hair light or an edge light to it and then I'm going to create a new light and I'm going to do a point light 
the same color as before and I'm going to bring it back towards the camera quite significantly and then I can adjust the angle at which it's pointing. One thing I do need to do as well is go into the properties and just adjust the brightness or the intensity here. That way it just is a little more realistic and it's not so bright. And actually I decided to change it to a blue light because the couches seem a little blue. So I'm going to add a fill light which is a little blue. That way it kind of fits a little bit more realistically into the scene. Next I'm going to grab some curves. I'm going to adjust the brights and the darks on the demo gorgon just to kind of add a bit of contrast to it. Make it a little bit more part of the scene. Keep in mind I'm not going to color grade the whole demo gorgon here. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more part of the scene. I'll add the stylistic touches a little later. And then I'm going to create a new adjustment layer just by right clicking, click new and do adjustment layer. And I'm just going to drag a copy of the curves effect onto that adjustment layer. Now I'm going to adjust the whole scene, bring down the darks and bring up the shadows and bring up the highlights a little bit and then add a little bit of a stylistic touch to it as well just to kind of make it look the way I want it to look. And once I'm satisfied with the lighting, I'm going to duplicate my background layer with the regular footage here, and I'm going to drag it above the Demogorgon layer, and already you can see that the Demogorgon disappears. That's okay, that's normal. I'm going to have to mask out the couch so that it's on top of the Demogorgon, and it looks like it's actually part of the scene. And I don't know why I do this to myself. A bunch of masking and rotoscoping, but basically draw the shape around the couch, and then I would essentially keyframe it or do rotoscoping for the next 30 13 seconds of video footage. But one nice little trick you can do is under the tracker with your mask selected on the layer, you can actually track forward one frame or you can track until it stops or until you stop it. That way it'll save some rotoscoping time. But keep in mind that if it goes off, if the mask gets lost, you need to stop it immediately. Otherwise you're gonna have to adjust the mask every single frame and that can get a little frustrating. So as soon as you see the mask kind of straying away from where it should be, stop it fix it and then keep moving forward after that. And then once I finish that masking, you can see that the Demogorgon is now behind the couch. It looks a lot more realistic, feels like it's part of the scene. And to be honest, it definitely looks a lot more realistic now that it is actually behind something in the scene. It feels like it's part of it. Whereas if I had it maybe just in a scene and wasn't behind something that was actually shot in the video footage, that wouldn't look as realistic. It might look realistic, it just depends on how you blend it and everything. But obviously, if you have something that is added through CG in After Effects, putting it behind objects definitely makes it look more realistic and part of the scene. Now I'm just going to jump back to this other shot because I feel like the lighting is a little different and I think there's some things you can learn from here. So I'm going to right click, click new, I'm going to do a light and I'm going to do a point light, same color as before, kind of a light orange. And I'm going to do two views, that way I can see the lights kind of move around the scene. And this can definitely be a little handy, especially if you're doing CG or 3D scenes in After Effects. And I'm actually going to go here, I'm going to do four views, that way I can see different angles and kind of move the light the way I want it to. So with this light selected, I want to drag it behind the Demogorgon to where that light is near the pillar. Because I want it to look like that light is spilling onto the Demogorgon from the back. Once I've done that, I can duplicate that light and I can drag it to the other side to kind of emulate that edge light from the other light on the right side of the camera. And then I'm going to create a new light. I'm going to do spotlight and I'm going to keep it the same color because there's a lot of yellow lights in this scene. And once I clicked OK, I'm going to drag it closer towards the camera and you can see the light move in those other windows as well. So that kind of gives you kind of a separate pair of eyes to show you where that light is actually going. So once I've adjusted the position and the angle at which I want it to point, I'm going to also adjust the intensity because obviously I don't want this Demogorgon to be too bright and distracting. And then I also want to change the light. I feel like that I want it to have a little bit more of a blue cast to it because there's a lot of blue and 
and darkness in this scene and I feel like there's a bit of a moon that can cast a blue type of feel onto the scene. So with the fill light I'm going to just make it a dark blue color and adjust the intensity to where I feel like it'll match. Now one thing you also need to keep in mind is you can use curves to kind of adjust this a little bit as well. So you can take down the shadows, bring up the highlights if you want to but I'm going to make it pretty dark since the scene is dark. This is just going to help me blend the Demogorgon into the scene a lot more and it just feels like it's more part of the scene especially if it's a dark setting I feel like it matches the scene a lot and so you can see I'm pretty satisfied with the whole lighting of this Demogorgon but the tracking isn't 100% and that just was an unfortunate situation because of the dim lighting and it probably combined with the shaky camera movement but I kind of did want that camera movement to kind of help sell the effect a lot more but uh, yeah there's no character rig at the moment I didn't want to get into that because uh, to be honest I'm still learning a bit of that. So I had a lot of fun creating this project for you guys, a lot of great tips and tricks and just fun stuff in general. So probably one of my most produced tutorials I've done so far, but it did take three days and as much as I enjoyed it, it does take a lot of time to create these videos. So I appreciate any of the support you guys might give, subscribe, leave a comment like these beautiful people over here. Really awesome to have some encouragement and uh, just show some support like that. I have a shop down in the description. Go ahead and check it out. You can download some presets for your videos, visual effects, projects, things like that. Just a great way to support the work that I do because I do do this full time. This is my full time job. But uh, yeah, until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting.